So in this last video, we need to take a look at one more issue. So go ahead and pause the video and write the full balanced reaction for solutions of ammonium chloride and potassium phosphate being mixed. And then we're going to take a look at what happens. Okay, so when you write this reaction, it's a no reaction. It has two aqueous products. And we want to talk about why we say that no reaction occurs. Think, think about what happens to ionic compounds when they dissolve in water. So we talked about it when we originally talked about ionic compounds. Remember that ionic compounds split into their ions when, you're, when they dissolve into water. So ammonium chloride really becomes ammonium ions and chloride ions. And potassium phosphate really becomes three pho potassium ions and one phosphate ion. And so when we rate that equation with the ions split out, you can see that on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side, everything looks the same. There's not a, any difference from one side to the other. Everything cancels out. So you can see you've got three ammonium ions here, three here. You've got three chloride ions here and three here. Three potassium ions here and three here. And one phosphate ion here and one here. So when you put things that stay dissolved in water together, if they don't form a precipitate, they're still just floating around in the same ionic state. And so there's not really any change that we can see. So let's talk about what we do. We write what's called a net ionic equation. And the net ionic equation just tells us exactly what we see in the reaction. It shows us the formation of that precipitate. And it happens, it can happen with a double replacement like we just did, or with a single replacement. So let's look at that. When we do a net ionic equation, we want to write the things that are ionized in solution as separate ions. So anything that has AQ as its symbol, those are dissolved ionic compounds. Everything else we're going to write like normal. We don't want to write anything that cancels out from both sides. And then anything that we cancel is called a spectator ion. You've probably heard the word spectator before. We think of a spectator as somebody who watches a sporting event or something like that. And so they're just out to the side, not really participating. So the reactions must also be mass balanced and charge balanced. And we'll talk about what that means. So with an anionic practice problem, let's just go ahead and pause the video, write the reaction, and then when you start the video, I'll put the reaction up. And then we'll go through how to split it into the net ionic equation. But always start with a complete balanced reaction. OK, so for this one, barium chloride. Barium is a 2 plus. Chloride is a 1 minus. So BaCl2. And it's a solution, so it's AQ. And then potassium is a 1 plus, sulfate is a 2 minus. So to have balanced compound, we need K2SO4. And that's also AQ. And this is a double replacement, so we're going to end up with potassium chloride. Potassium's a plus 1, chloride's a minus 1. So KCl. And then our other product is going to be barium sulfate. So barium's a plus 2, sulfate's a minus 2, BaSO4. So remember with double replacement, we always need to check our solubility rules. KCl is AQ. It is soluble in water. And barium sulfate would be a solid. That would be your precipitate there. We need to go ahead and balance. Um, as you can see, we need to put a 2 in front of the KCl. And that gives us the complete balanced equation. So that's the point you always want to start at. And then what we want to do is break everything that's an AQ into its ions. Everything else, like this solid, we're going to leave as it is. Remember to include the subscripts as you go. So we have a barium 2 plus ion that is AQ. And then we have two chloride ions. They are also AQ. 
And then we also have two potassium ions. Those are AQ and one sulfate ion, and that is AQ. Don't forget the charge there. And draw the arrow, and here with the KCl, because it's AQ, remember to apply that coefficient. We've got two K plus AQ ions, and then we've got two chloride ions, two Cl minus with the AQ. And then the barium sulfate, because it is a solid, we just write it as it is. So when we put these solutions together, we've got all these ions in solutions, but then they formed this precipitate. So what we want to do is look at both sides to see which things could cancel. Stop and do that. Hopefully what you see is that potassium will cancel on this side and that side and then the two chlorides will cancel. And then we want to come back down to the bottom and just write everything that's left. And that will be our net ionic equation. So Ba with a 2 plus, don't forget the Aq, SO4 2 minus with Aq, and then that gives us Ba SO4, and I forgot to put the solid in there, so don't you forget that step. All right, and so we want to check to see that it's mass balanced. So one barium, one barium, one sulfate, one sulfur, one sulfur, and then four oxygens on each side. So you want to check and make sure the atoms are the same. If you start with a balanced equation, that should help that situation. The other thing is we want to check to see if it's charge balanced. So if you add up all the charges on the left, they should equal all the charges on the right added up. So a positive two plus a negative two would be zero. And we know the charge on a neutral compound is zero. So that one's mass balanced and charge balanced. Let's try another one. Again, pause the video and write out the full balanced equation with all its symbols. See if you can split this one into its ions and come out with the net ionic equation. And then go ahead to the answer and check. If you have problems, go back and listen to the entire solution so that you don't miss anything. So ammonium is a 1 plus, carbonate is a 2 minus, so we've got NH4, 2, CO3, and that's AQ because it's a solution. And then we have calcium chloride, Ca, Cl2, our calcium is a 2 plus, chloride is a 1 minus, and that is also AQ. And then, again, this is two two-part compounds, so double replacement reaction. Remember, the positive from one goes with the negative from the other. So the ammonium is going to go with the chloride. They each have a charge of one, so ammonium is a plus one, chloride is a minus one, so NH4Cl. And then the other compound is going to be calcium carbonate. Remember to write the metal first, so Ca which is a 2 plus, and CO3, which is a 2 minus, so we just needed one of each. Let's go ahead and put our symbols. Ammonium chloride, remember to check your solubility rules here. That would be soluble, so it is AQ. And then calcium carbonate, that would be our precipitate, so that would be solid. That would be insoluble, so that makes it a solid. The other step that we need to take is to balance this. Calcium and carbonate are balanced, but NH4 and Cl are not, so they need a 2 here. Now we need to go ahead and split everything up into its, atom, into its ions. So we've got two ammoniums, so 2 NH4+, plus, and that's AQ, plus 1 carbonate, so CO3, 2 minus, with an AQ. And then we've got one calcium with a 2 plus charge, that is AQ and then two chloride ions, and those are also AQ. Don't forget the charge there. And then on this side, because ammonium chloride is AQ, we're going to split it into its ions. So remember that that coefficient applies to both parts of the compound. So 2 NH4 plus AQ plus 2 Cl minus AQ, 
And then because calcium carbonate is our solid, we're just going to drop it down and write it as it is. It doesn't split into its ions. It formed that precipitate. Now we want to look and see what cancels on both sides. Hopefully you're seeing that the, the two chlorides will cancel and the two ammoniums will cancel. So if you come down to the bottom and write what's left, you have CO3 2 minus plus CA 2 plus, and both of those should have an AQ. Don't forget those symbols. And then they form CaCO3 with the solid. And you can see that there's one calcium, one calcium, one carbon, one carbon, three oxygens, three oxygens. The calcium carbonate has a zero charge. If you add negative two and positive two, that would also be zero. So we've got it, we've checked to see that it's mass balanced and charge balanced. Now let's take a look at one more. Go ahead and write this uh, reaction and balance it. Then check back in to make sure you've got the correct reaction. And then let's look at doing, the, let's do the net ionic equation together. So just make sure you have your reaction right and that you've done it yourself. So we've got magnesium and that is a solid. Magnesium is a metal so it would be a solid. And it's added to a solution of copper 2 nitrate. Copper is a 2 plus. Nitrate is one of your polyatomic ions. It's a 2 minus so it's Cu NO3 2. Now looking at this reaction, it's not double replacement. Oh, don't forget your AQ here. So Okay, so go ahead and write the reaction and then as soon as you've done the reaction, don't start on the net ionic equation. Just fast forward to the part where the answer is with just the balanced equation and then listen to the rest so that you understand this problem's a little bit different. You'll see why in a minute. So looking at this, we've got magnesium, which is a metal. So it's Mg and it's a solid. And it's added to a solution of copper 2, 2 plus, and nitrate 1 minus. So Cu, NO3, 2. And that's a solution, so it's Aq. And then if you look at this, this is not a double replacement reaction like you've been seeing. Hopefully you recognize that it's a single replacement. So the first thing we need to do is check and see if magnesium will replace copper. Is copper below magnesium on the activity series? Once you've checked that, you'll see that magnesium will replace copper. So we know that one of the products would be magnesium nitrate. So magnesium has a plus two charge, nitrate's a negative one. So MgNO3 2, and that's if you look on your uh, reference table at your solubility rules, that would be AQ. And then the copper would be a solid. It would precipitate out of that reaction. And the nice thing about this one is it's already balanced. So we've got two nitrates, one magnesium, and one copper on each side. So let's go ahead and split this up into its ions. So magnesium is a solid, so we just write it as it is. Copper 2 nitrate is aqueous, so it's going to split into its ions. Copper with a 2 plus charge. AQ plus two nitrates, so two NO3 minus AQ. And then on the right side, it's going to be Mg with a two plus charge, AQ plus two nitrate ions, and that's an AQ. And then you have the copper that's a solid. So for this one, when you look to see what will cancel, you can see that the nitrates will cancel, but that's it. Because remember that they need to match identically. This magnesium is a solid, this magnesium is aqueous and has a charge, so we can't cancel that. So let's come down and write the reaction that's left.
This is going to be our net ionic equation. So magnesium solid plus Cu with a 2 plus charge, Aq, gives us magnesium with a 2 plus charge, and Aq, and then copper, that's a solid. And so we want to check to see if it's mass balanced. One magnesium and one magnesium on each side, one copper and one copper on each side. And then we want to make sure it's charge balanced. If you add up the charges on the right, you've got copper, which is neutral, so zero plus two would be two on the right. And then on the left, you have magnesium, which is neutral, so zero plus two, which is two on the left. So you have that mass balanced and charge balanced. So try this last one. Try that by yourself and bring it into class and we will go over it together. So write the balanced equation, split it into its ions, do the canceling of any of the ions that are the same on both sides, and then we'll go over that one together to make sure everybody's got the hang of these. I'll see you in class.